Every square matrix has a number uh, associated with it that's called the determinant. And I'm going to go like this. It's almost, it looks like absolute value marks. It's not the absolute value, but it kind of looks like that. Sometimes they'll just write it like this. They put the, they replace the square sort of brackets with these sort of vertical bars. And the determinant of a square matrix is going to be a number. And for a two by two matrix, the way you calculate that number is very easy. You multiply the number on the top left by the number on the bottom right, and then you subtract the number on the bottom left times the number on the top right. So in this case, the determinant of 2, 1, 3, 5 is the 10 minus 3, which is 7. In terms of variables, we can say the determinant of A, B, C, D is A, D minus B, C. And a place where we see calculations like this, A, D minus B, C, come up is when you're, um, when you're doing systems of equations. Imagine I was solving the system of equation A, X plus B, Y equals C. Um, sorry, equals E CX plus DY equals F, and I was just doing it by elimination. I might, and let's say I want to solve for, for X, so I might multiply this equation through by D, and this equation through by, uh, by B. It would turn into ADX plus BTY equals DE and BCX plus BTY equals BF and I subtract to eliminate the Y and I would get ADX minus BCX equals DE minus BF and if I factor out the X and divide both sides, I get DE minus BF over AD minus BC. And I'm showing you that because we see AD minus BC is the determinant. So somehow the determinant's like an important thing, like the idea of multiplying the top left by the bottom right and subtracting the bottom left times the top right. That's like a, a thing. For now, the number that it becomes, like 7 for this one, and I can make up a, a, another question. What if I asked you to do uh, 3 minus 2, 4, negative 1? The determinant of that one is going to be 5. Now this number, one thing I can say about that number right now is usually it's not 0. But if it does become zero, uh, that actually has some, some significance. I'll show you a situation where, where a determinant of zero appears. Imagine I have this equation 2x plus 3y equals 10 and 4x plus 6y equals uh, 15. If I take the determinant of the coefficient matrix, I get 12 minus 12 is zero. And notice also that if I actually went and solved this, this system of equations by multiplying this row both sides by 2, I get 4x plus 6y equals 20. And when I subtracted, I would get 0 equals 5, so there'd be no solution. It's also possible, although not in this case, like had this been a 20 instead of a 15, I would get 0 equals 0, which would mean there's, there's many solutions. So for now, the only thing that we know about determinants is that if it's not zero, there's going to be a unique solution to the system of equations, and if it is zero, there's not a unique solution. So that, so that is something, some, something we can conclude based on the number that comes out of that determinant. A 3 by 3 matrix is much more complicated. And there's two methods for finding the determinant of a 3 by 3 
uh, matrix. I'm going to show you two of the methods. Uh, the first method is to copy the first column over here as like the fourth column now and the second column as like the fifth column. And now I'm going to do six calculations. I'm going to make these three green ovals, sort of these diagonals. And I'm going to make three red ones. It's not red yet. Three red ones here. Here. And what we do, and it is kind of similar to, to, to the crisscross, to, to, you know, in this one, this is kind of like the red, this is like the green diagonal, and this is the red diagonal. Okay, so the way this works is, for the green diagonals, we multiply the numbers together in the green diagonal. So 2 times 2 times negative 1, plus the numbers in the second green diagonal, 1, plus four, one times 4 times 1, plus the numbers in the third diagonal, 5 times 2 times negative 6. And if we do that, we get negative 4 plus 4. Um, is it 5 times 3? Sorry. Uh, minus 90. So we get negative 90. Not done yet. Now let's take the, the red diagonals and do the same thing. 1 times 2 times 5 plus negative 6 times 4 times 2 plus negative 1 times 3 times 1. And we get 10 minus 48. minus 2. Hmm. Hold on a sec. Sorry, this is a 3, so it's minus 3, which becomes uh, 48, which becomes minus 41. And finally, we subtract these two numbers, minus 90, minus negative 41, and we get as our answer the answer, which is negative 49. So that's one way of finding the determinant of the 3 by 3. Uh, this is all kind of mysterious at this point. There are going to be some reasons for these rules, but for now it's just, uh, it's just how to do it. The last method is called the cofactor method. method. Cofactor method. Co and the way it works is, you pick, you have six choices. You could pick, there are three rows and three columns. You could pick any one of them. I'm going to just pick row one. If you pick an odd row, you're going to go like this, plus, minus, plus. If you pick an even row or even column, you're going to do minus, plus, minus. And here's what we do, fill in the numbers. So we're going to take this row. We take the very first number in that row, and you write it down here. You can put the second number over here. You can put the third number over there. Now, next to each of these numbers, we're going to put a 2 by 2 determinant. Now, what four numbers go in there? Well, it goes like this. For the one with the two, you imagine if I crossed off the entire column and row that the two was in, the numbers left would be two, four, negative six, negative one. If instead I crossed off... Um, Actually, I'm going to write this matrix again. It'll be better. Okay, next to this one here, I am going to cross off the row and column that the one's in, and the numbers that are left are 3, 4, 1, negative 1. And finally, if I cross off the row and column that the 5 was in, I'd have 3, 2, 1, minus 6. 
So now I calculate out 2. The 2 by 2 is just 2 times negative 1 times 2 times negative 1 minus 4 times negative 6, which is negative 2, uh, which is uh, negative 2 minus negative 24, which turns into positive 22. You get get really careful about your signs here. This other one turns into 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3, minus 4 times 1, becomes negative 7. And the last one turns into 3 times negative 6, which is negative 18, minus 2 is negative 20. And when you put these together, you get 44 plus 7 is 51, minus 100 is back to negative 49. And this negative 49 is what you would get no matter which row or column you chose. But just be careful. If you pick an even row or column, you would, your, your signs would still alternate, but they would alternate minus, plus, minus. And this method actually works for 4 by 4 matrices. You would turn it into a row of 4 3 by 3s. You'd have 4 numbers times 3 by 3 matrices. So it, it's easily expand, uh, generalized. It actually even works for a 2 by 2 matrix, 2, 1, 3, 5. If I went along the first row, it would be 2 times the matrix 5 minus 1 times the matrix 3. It's pretty reasonable to think that the determinant of a 1 by 1 matrix is just itself. And we get back to our original uh, rule. Uh, final thing I want to say. is normally, it, if there's no zeros involved, it doesn't matter which row or column you choose. But if you do notice there's a lot of zeros, you would choose to expand along, in this case, the second row. It's even row, so minus 3 plus 0 minus 0. So you see, I wouldn't even need to bother with those two pieces. And I would just get minus 3 times, if I cross off the row and column with a 3 in it, I have this 2 by 2, 2, 7, 1, 9. So it's minus 3 times 18 minus 7 is 11 is minus 77. So there is a situation where uh, if, if, if you notice that there are zeros, you want to pick the row that's got the most zeros in it so that you can save time in calculating out the uh, determinant. Well, that ends this lesson. Thanks.